Good evening. Welcome to our prayer vigil, kicking off the week of prayer for Christian unity. This week, Christians around the world will gather to pray together in a single common service around our theme, Do Good, Seek Justice. Organized by the World Council of Churches, which is an ecumenical council of Christian traditions around the world, this year's prayer services and reflections have been compiled by the Minnesota Council of Churches. Some of their leaders in that organization, as well as activists and or pastors of faith communities. You received a packet which contains a wonderful introduction to the theme and offers much to reflect, to reflect on in the days ahead. This packet also contains the music and the words that will be singing tonight, so can you please join in? For years, Minnesota has had some of the worst racial disparities in the nation. The city and its racial tensions have come into the national spotlight with the murder of George Floyd in March of 2020. The history of mistreatment of Black, Indigenous, and people of color in the U.S. has created long-standing inequities and relational rifts between communities. Tonight, we pray for compassion, understanding, and unity. We will hear stories of lived experience of injustice and the impact it has on one's life. We will be invited to share our own insights and experiences as we explore the prophetic call to do good and seek justice. Now, upon entering the sanctuary, each of us has received a stone symbolizing the happiness of those experiencing racial inequality and the impact it has on each of us and our communities. I encourage you to hold the stone in your hand. Feel its heaviness. Struggle with the inconvenience of holding it throughout the service. Maybe feel it get heavier and heavier as the service goes on. Allow this stone, along with the scripture and prayers we speak tonight, open us to a deeper understanding. It is our hope that through prayer, reflection, and hearing personal experiences of racism and the devaluation of human life, we will open our eyes and our hearts to the inhumanity of God's children toward one another. It is also our deep longing that we as Christians embody God's gift of unity in addressing and eradicating the divisions that keep us from understanding and experiencing the reality that we all belong together, we all belong. And so let us pray. Sisters and brothers, we gather here in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. By the waters of baptism, we have become members of the body of Christ, yet our sins have caused pain and trauma to each other. We have failed to do good. We have not sought justice in the face of grave oppression, nor heeded God's command to care for the widow and the orphan. As we gather, let us reflect on our actions and inactions and learn to do good and seek justice. We ask for God's grace to overcome our divisions and uproot our systems and structures that have contributed to the fracturing of our communities. We gather to pray to reinforce the unity that we have as people of faith, to open our hearts that we may be bold in finding the riches of inclusion and the treasures of diversity among us. We pray in faith. Thank you. 
eternal life with you. to confess and receive forgiveness through the reading of uh, the first chapter of the book of Isaiah, verses 12 through 18. Responses will be on the screen. We are invited to confess our sins with the words of the prophet Isaiah. When you come to appear before me, who asked this from your hand? <coughs> Trample my cords no more. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is, is an abomination to me. Forgive us, Lord, when we come to worship without walking humbly before you. New moon and Sabbath and calling of vocation. I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul beats. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. We ask forgiveness for the complicity of churches and the evils of colonialism felt around the world. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. We ask forgiveness for our sins of injustice and oppression that suppress the diverse harmony of your creation. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. As we have been washed clean in the living waters of baptism, forgive us anew and reconcile us to one another and to creation. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. May God in his mercy free us from our sins so that we can do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Almighty God hears our prayers, and has mercy on us, and forgives us our sins. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. God of all, our hearts and bodies are thankful for this opportunity to come before you and confess our sins of injustice and divisiveness. Together we come before you, a holy family, united in the beautiful diversity of your creation. Some of us are indigenous peoples. Some of us are descendants of the enslaved. Some of us are descendants of the enslavers. Some of us are migrants. Some of us are refugees. But all of us are part of the one body of Christ. We praise you that through the living waters of baptism, our sins, red as scarlet, were washed away and we were healed as we became part of the beloved community, the family of God. We offer our thanksgiving and praise to you, Creator God. Together on this journey, we celebrate with our hearts and eyes open to understanding and growing in the sacred wisdom that is shared and passed among all people. Help us to embrace unity with each other and remind us that we are of one family gathered by your Holy Spirit in the midst of your creation. Amen.
Please join in singing Wade in the Water. Response will be on the screen. 
As the deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? Holy be God, for I shall again praise him. My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. Holy God, for I shall again praise him. Why are you cast down on my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Hope in God, for I shall again praise him. By day the Lord commands his staff and his love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? Oh, my God, for I shall again praise him. As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down on my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him. Our gospel reading tonight is from the Gospel of Matthew, verses chapter 25, verses 31 to 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink, a stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked and you clothed me, ill and you cared for me, in prison and you visited me. And the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers or sisters of mine, you did for me. Please join in singing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
Because if we let our fear and anxiety stop us from engaging, then we will never engage. And if we allow our anxiety, if we if we allow our anxiety and fear of offending, stop us from asking the question, we'll never ask the question. If we never risk being criticized or judged because we call out an injustice, we will never call out the injustice. In other words, if we let our own fear get in the way of doing something, nothing will ever change. And isn't that what the prophet Isaiah is calling us to when God threw him? To step into the fray, to risk offending, and to, to risk change? So my friends, I think the invitation before us at this moment in history, and every moment in history, is to risk opening our hearts to something new. Opening ourselves to the possibility of something different. Allowing our hearts and our minds and our awarenesses to see things differently. Maybe even to allow for the possibility that we may not know. We may not see. We may not have the whole story. Can we allow for the possibility that someone who doesn't look like me or talk like me or live like me may actually have a different experience of life than me? That not everybody who lives in this white middle class gifted life that I've had the privilege of growing up in is blessed with that? Can I begin to hear a different narrative than the one that I live in? I think that's the invitation before us. And I also think that's where we start. Maybe just the willingness to open our hearts, to listen to these stories, to check our judgments and our opinions. Maybe that's enough to increase our awareness just a little bit. And maybe that's what we're called to do right now. And then, with just that little opening, maybe, just maybe, the Spirit will flood in and work through us to do the big stuff. Our part might just be to create that opening, which will allow bigger things to happen. So tonight we begin. We have the opportunity to hear some stories. We have the opportunity to listen to see through someone else's eyes the reality of their lived experience. You've each been holding a stone. After each story, the storyteller, or a representative of the storyteller, will place a their stone in the basket, symbolizing that perhaps just a bit of the weight has been lifted simply in the telling of the story, in being heard, in being held in reverence and respect. After our three stories, colors are um, complete with their story, we'll be, we'll be saying, I commit myself to respond to the call of Isaiah to do good and seek justice, which will be projected on the screen. And after all three storytellers are done, we'll have a little bit of time to quiet, where each of us is invited to reflect on our own experiences of injustice and our prophetic call to transformation. If you feel called, you're invited to share your thoughts with us. We'd love to hear them. And then when you're ready, Mabel, I invite you to come forward and place your stone in the basket. We will then again, once again, once get together, make our declaration of our commitment as, as we move in deeper into the prayer service. Our first story to tell her tonight will be Denise, and she'll be on the screen. My name is Holly Iceburner. I'm here with Denise Jackson, who is has been a student of mine for many years. She had started out a long time ago, and su she surprised me by coming back to college many years later. So she um, is going to talk to us a little bit. Well, I should say why I chose Denise for this. She is a wonderful example of someone who is really determined and won't let other people get her down with their prejudices. She has said that 
she will just move on from people that, that hurt her. Um, she doesn't get bogged down in it. So a couple questions for you, Denise. What prejudices and bad behavior have you experienced as a woman of color and as a person with a disability? Well, I experience a lot, like school, mm -hmm. even going to, like, I went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And that was terrible how she treated me to be a nurse. And it's just different places that you go and people, you can, you can, you can see it and you can know how they act. Like they don't want to, you hand the money, they don't want to touch it, touch you and anything like that. I said, what this is all about? Because we're right. all human beings and we're supposed to be Christians. So I right. experienced a lot out of life, but I deal with it and it don't mm -hmm. even bother me. I don't even care anymore. I just love people and treat them according to the way I want it to be treated. Yes, that's awesome. And um, what can you tell us about how, how can you judge if someone is being condescending or is talking down to you? How can you judge that? Basically, you can tell it because I'm woman, I'm, I'm 64 years old. You know, I've been through life, so I know right. I've been around all type of people and stuff. Right. And I know when a person try to talk you down and mm -hmm. I would say, excuse me, um, you know, as a Christian, we don't talk like this, you know? Right. And you just know it, you know it. Right. And then, like I say, body language tell it all. Mm -hmm. But they didn't stop me because I went through a lot um, stick, you know, um, I'll stick, you know, things and stuff. People mm -hmm. talk about me, this mm -hmm. and that, but it didn't matter because mm -hmm. I knew I always keep God first and I right. knew that God was on my side. And then I had good people uh, um, down the line coming up, been real good to me, teaches me, learn, they care. Mm -hmm. So, and and they was, um, you know, minority and stuff, mm -hmm. especially Caucasian stuff. Like mm -hmm. I said, you got some people, it's just prejudice and it's mm -hmm. sad because that makes their life miserable. But me, I'm happy. I got a disability, but I'm the happiest woman in the world because mm -hmm. I found out what was my disability. Mm -hmm. And when I found that out, I was able to cope with it. Mm -hmm. I always worked. Mm -hmm. I never, you know, with my disability, I could have got a check, but I refused to mm -hmm. do that. And everybody, oh, you got this, but you can get a check of food stamp. Kids never read a food stamp. I right. just taught them, you know, hey, if you got a disability, you could still make it. Right. Don't let that stop you. Right. And people, you're going to have people's down, downside looking at you all crazy. Mm -hmm. But just look over. I don't. Me, I don't care. Whatever you feel, I don't care because mm -hmm. I don't ask you for anything. And you probably ask me more for something, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. life. Right, right. Well, something that really impressed me that you said is that God is about love, not mm -hmm. hate. So how how does, how does that represent itself in how people should treat you? Okay, well... I say God is about love. The way I grew up, mm -hmm. I grew up, you know, it was like 10 of us, mm -hmm. mostly girls. Mm -hmm. And my moms, my grandmother, you know, I grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. And the church, it was about love. The church that I grew up, you would like it, say that if you, if you was in my neighborhood mm -hmm. and you didn't have no boys and your husband, the wife go to the hospital, the husband got to go to work. My moms took the girls, we clammed up, we did it, we couldn't take a dime, my mother did the cooking. And see, that was love. And then when you help people's not, you know, like people's, you see people's and stuff and see them begging and homeless people, you look at them like up and down, like, ugh, that's not love. Mm -hmm. Love is about passion, mm -hmm. uh, helping people. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of church I know. I don't even really go to church because most of them is about business. Mm -hmm. And that ain't the kind of church I was grew up in. So what I do is I read my daily word before I mm -hmm. leave my house. And if a person I'm driving, that person is standing there asking for money, I have like I go to uh, Starbucks mm -hmm. and this guy is uh, standing up. He has some money. If I can go and spend five dollars for Starbucks and he might be really hungry, I have another five, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why I say love and passion. That's a right. care. Right. That's what Christians do. 
Christians on down uh, disability and don't have, they have certain mm -hmm. crowds that they hang with. Oh, mm -hmm. smile, people, you got this and you got more, but that's ain't the God I know. And that's right. not the love. Right. That's, yeah. that's awesome. And um, I am very impressed with you, Denise. I think you have done a wonderful job with your children and your grandchildren, mm -hmm. and I'm sure they're very proud of you. Oh, yeah. Um, is there anything else you would like to say? Only thing I can say, you know, to the world and peoples, if we stop and help somebody, and people with disability don't down them and stuff because they are very smart people, but mm -hmm. they need their support. And then we have the younger generation. If you, like, even at the schools and stuff like academic and stuff, they need to get better mm -hmm. because when you go for help, when mm -hmm. you go for help, they looking. That's how we losing so many young people uh, suicide uh, uh, because they get turned away. The disability drugs we supposed to help, not mm -hmm. you know, not just down them and not just be there for a paycheck. And right. like I say, body language tell it. Right. So me, right. if I go to somebody and ask them, and I they show no answer, I say, oh, never mind. Um, I go somewhere else and go to the next right. person right. because right. I figure right. out a three or four pot. Five people, mm -hmm. somebody got mm -hmm. some passion and love somewhere, right, right, and I don't right. give up. And right. I tell the young people, and people with disability don't get up. You can mm -hmm. do anything you want. Mm -hmm. I worked all my life. Mm -hmm. I, I I take good care of myself, and I mm -hmm. deserve it. And I never went to the government for nothing because mm -hmm. I wanted more out of life. And mm -hmm. you can do it too. Right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Denise. It's a pleasure knowing you. And um, I think you you made a you did a w wonderful job expressing yourself. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you. And so let us respond. I commit myself to respond to the call of Isaiah to do good and seek justice. share a story of someone I know and her experience. My name is Rachel. I'm a white, middle-class young woman. My Mary Dignasen, a wonderful white man who grew up in a Hasidic Jewish family in Chicago. <laughs> For those of you who might not know, Hasidic Jews are very conservatively religious, traditional Jews who live the Orthodox religious practices. Though not a practicing Jew today, my husband grew up in the tradition of his parents. He went to Hebrew school, he observed Jewish holidays, and wore his yarmulke, a skull, the skull cap Jewish males wear to signify their devotion to faith. One afternoon, when Nassim and his best friend were walking home from school, they were accosted by an anti-Semitic man. Being shouted at with derogatory names and racist comments, the boys naturally ran away. As they were nearing their escape, the hater shot at them. He fired a gun at two 12-year-old boys who were just walking home from school. Nassim walked away unharmed. His best friend wasn't so lucky. He was shot. Fortunately, his injuries were not life-threatening, and he recovered, at least physically. Fast forward 20-some odd years. Nassim and I recently gave birth to our firstborn son, a beautiful, healthy baby boy who we, we've christened with a Jewish name to honor my husband's heritage. And as we gaze down at our six-week-old son, we can't help but wonder, what kind of hate will he have to endure? With the rise of anti-Semitism in our country, what prejudices will he encounter? Will he be safe? How can we protect him from the hatred? How will we shield him from harm? Will people try to kill him as they're trying to kill Jews all around the world still today? When will we need to have the talk 
to help them understand that just because of his name, just because of his family her family's heritage, people will hate him and try to hurt him. What kind of a world will our infant son encounter? Will it be full of hatred, or can we build a world of love? I commit myself to respond to the call of Isaiah to do good and seek justice.
The other thing is maybe fasting, you know, we fasting all the month, uh, 30 days, we can eat from the sunshine to the sunset. And I think that is also weird when you go to uh, like a place and some people offer food or a drink for you and you say I'm fasting, but well, to you it's like something weird by you. It's like disrespect, but it's our religion. We can't. I respect you and I like to share you, but I can't do that. Uh, Social media today is, I don't know, uh, what they try to tell the people or uh, show about the Islamic religion that religion is uh, terrorism, terrorism and bad and killer and uh, they are responsible about um, scare people or do bad things and I, don't, I think it's not the truth Islamic religion is good is peaceful and uh, like uh, look to the all the human beings like brothers and sisters and uh, I will end my uh, uh, talk about God said in our book, you have to believe in me, it's like you see me, and if you can't see me, I see you. So God watching you, and you have to know that. That's it. Thank you. And so let us say, I commit myself to respond to the call of Isaiah to do good and seek justice. Now I invite anyone else your thoughts. So as I was listening, and I'm holding my rock, all right, and of course I'm trying to do a lot of things here, and I'm holding my rock the whole time. As Charlie comments, it's getting warm, kind of uncomfortable. But I noticed as I was holding it that I started really appreciating it. And, um, and I started thinking about that, how comfortable I started feeling holding my rock. And so I'm actually really looking forward to, to making myself set it down. And let it go and get, you know, it's not being comfortable on now. I'm going to let it go. I don't want to hear it yet. So it was nice to <laughs> And I just want to say thank you. That was, that was very, I really thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I'm Solomon's wife. Um, there's one thing that he didn't um, bring up that sticks in my mind and it will always stay there. Um, we have a restaurant in West Bend and my husband and his brother um, speak Arabic a lot of times between the two of them. And they were talking to each other and there was a man. We were extremely busy that day. There was a man waiting for his food and he was not happy about waiting. And he stuck his head into the restaurant window and yelled, you're in America now, speak English. And this is one of the things that I've personally seen for, um, you know, something in the different cultures that they have experienced that a lot of people would never expect, but they deal with that, just, they're working hard, baking food, um, trying to do their best to serve the people, and to have to hear that is unacceptable. So that is one thing that I have seen in my eyes that he had to deal with here since he's been here. So.
commit myself to respond to the call of Isaiah to do good and seek your justice. In response to uh, your comment, I um, several people talk to me about this. When you go in to get the manicure done, mm -hmm. and um, you're sitting there, and the attendants are Vietnamese, and they speak Vietnamese to each other, that language to each other, mm -hmm. and not English. And you who are sitting there getting your nails done, your toes manicured or whatever it is, feel like they might be talking about you. That's the only response that I have about that. Mm -hmm. I feel if you're going to, if you have an uncomfortable feeling going in to get your nails done because they're speak, they might be speaking about you. Mm -hmm. about A lot of times they play they don't speak English, so that's all they can do is speak their language. Well, that's true. They don't speak English, you know. So. And my friend, backyard neighbor, took it upon herself uh, because she went there every week to get her nails done. She said to the proprietor, who was also Vietnamese, I will speak, I will teach your, your people English. She has uh, uh, English as a second language. Uh, she has done this to about five or six people. And uh, I think that is worthy of, you know, praising her for doing that too, to acclimate. He can speak English pretty decently. He's really can. His brother is not. So mm -hmm. the issue is they speak together in their language mm -hmm. because he understands better, so it's easier for them. So I'm not, I'm not condemning it. Sure, please don't get me. No, sure. I have this understand. But, um, and I do. I'm Norwegian. I speak Norwegian. And I, you know, I can understand where you're coming from because so many times the words are easier or are more meaningful and mean more in that language than what an English has to offer. I guess the point of it was they, they weren't speaking directly to that person. They were working out oh, okay. to each other. And yes, that stuck his head in the window and you know that wasn't necessary. It was, it was really disrespectful. So, so that I, I agree with that. that. Totally. Yeah. I agree with that. Thank you very much. Because you were in your own space. You weren't sitting in front of people. Right. When the customers come, he talks to English. Would you like to bring your song up? Did you mean to? No, I don't. I appreciate the answer. I mean, this is a space hopefully we can share our thoughts. So let us say, I commit myself to respond to the call of our race to do good and to see If you would like, when you're ready, you're all welcome just to come forth and put place your stone in the house. Let us say once more together. I commit myself to respond to the call of Isaiah to do good and seek justice. And let's sing together our next song What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. Leading. 
We'll continue with our prayers of intercession, and our response will be on the screen. With faith and confidence, we come in prayer before God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <coughs> Creator God, today we live with the consequences of actions that have made life unsustainable for some and overabundant for others. Teach us to know how to use responsibly the resources you have given to us for the benefit of all and the respect of your creation. The groaning creation cries out to you. Teach us and show us the way. Compassionate God, help us repair the harm that we have inflicted upon each other and the divisions we have created among your people. Just as Christ Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit onto the disciples to birth the community of a new creation, send your grace to heal our divisions and give us and gift us with the unity for which Jesus prayed. Teach us, Teach us and, and show us, us the way. Christ, the way, the truth, and the light. You embody justice in your ministry on earth by the good that you did, breaking down the walls that divide and the prejudices that imprison. Open our hearts and minds to recognize that though we are many, we are one in you. Teach, Teach us, us and show us the way. Holy Spirit, you created me with the face of the earth. The summit of the mountains, the thunder of the sky, the rhythm of the lakes, speak to us. Because, because we are connected. The faintness of the stars, the freshness of the morning, the dewdrops on the flower, speak to us. Because, because we are connected. The voices of the poor, the oppressed, and the marginalized speak to us. Because, because we are connected. But above all, our hearts soar to you, for we cry out, Abba, Father, as we say our Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So as we bring our service to a close this evening, I just want to thank you once again for joining us. I want to thank our storytellers, Solomon, and Jackie, and Denise, and Rachel, for the courage of sharing your story. I think it's so helpful for us to hear the stories and to be able to share our experiences as well. That's how dialogue, that's how these conversations can start. That's how barriers come down. That's how we can begin to see how much more we have in common than we have apart. So thank you. And thank, thank my helpers tonight for making this even possible, Jenny and Judy and Janet. Linda, uh, with the beautiful music, thank you because it takes a village and I just appreciate all of your assistance with this. And for those who are going to be um, doing our reflections over the next eight days, starting on Wednesday, our Facebook page and our YouTube page will be posting daily reflections around this theme. Um, done by various members of our community, so I invite you to plug into those. And tonight, stay, bring us some hospitality, um, just to continue talking and getting to know each other and sharing your stories and, and help us out for our community. And so with that, that is great. Everlasting God, look upon these faces gathered together in holy community, and send them anywhere you would have them go. Encourage us by your Holy Spirit to continue to tell our stories, 
to do good, and to seek justice for the sake of your creation through our actions. Sustain us that we may be one, so that the world may believe that you sent your only Son, Jesus, for the life of the world. And as we go forth from this, this service tonight, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make space to shine upon us and be gracious to us. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and bring us peace. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our closing song, Lift Every Voice and Sing.
Join us for hospitality. <laughs>